In this video, we're gonna build this table. some of the specifications and things that I've done so that maybe later down the road you can build a table just like this one or completely different. So to start off, the tubing that I use to make this is three inch by three inch with an eighth inch wall thickness. I love working with bigger square tube. I find it way easier to line everything up. It wants to stay still when you're actually moving it around. I just like three inch tube. So that's just a personal preference. I've also put a two inch overhang all the way around this table. I've done it so small specifically that over time, it doesn't want to bend down. It seems like the edges of your table are the first thing to bend. Now, notice that these legs are all the way to the ground. Makes it really hard to move. So in a part two video, I'm going to build a hydraulic jacking system where we're actually going to push down the wheels so that way it can roll around really easily. Right now, I do have wheels on the other side so that I can move it around, but it is far too heavy to do that. The tabletop is three feet wide and six feet long and three eighths thick. You'll notice on the long side that I have two hitch receivers. These are gonna be for accessories that I'm gonna build later down the road. Things like I'm gonna have a mount that put, I put a vise in here, maybe a magnetic vise, um, maybe a drill press, maybe a belt sander that's mounted, um, or I could even do an extension to the table off of these because they run the entire length and also give more support to the center of my table. Once all those accessories are built and I have more time, I'm going to actually build a whole racking system underneath here that is made out of a bunch of receiver hitches so I can slide it all in and they'll be all stored really nice. Because again, I have a size issue, which is the reason that I've made this table smaller than four by eight is because I need to be able to pull in a truck into my garage. Now the overall height of the table is 36 inches, which I personally feel is the perfect working height. And ultimately, that's everything you need to know. So let's go ahead and start building this. So the first thing I do is I usually just take my square. I usually just use a framing square. I like it a little bit longer. So that way when I'm trying to line up the top here, and I put it up here, get the first one square, and then I go in through and I just uh, do cross measurements, make sure that it is a perfect square. You wanna get it within like 30 second of a cross square. So that's my goal, and this is how I do it. And I just measure across from one corner, over here and I get 46 and 7 eighths, over to my other one, and it is 46 and 7 eighths. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my cross measurement again, 47 and 7 eighths, 47 and 7 eighths. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and add some more tacks up up at the top, down here at the bottom. Go ahead and flip it over, tack it some more, and then we're just gonna weld it out. Okay, so before I weld this one together, I'm gonna quickly slap together the other end. That way I can make sure they're perfectly identical um, before I continue on. But one thing that I didn't really talk about is make sure that all of your pieces are nicely lined up you want your end product to look really good, making sure that there's no steps from piece to piece is really a, a good like habit to get into. Some of the things that you can do if you want to make sure this happens is you can just take your square, put it on here, make sure there's no rock. You can also go from corner to corner like this. I, I hate it when I see a square tube that's kind of twisted inside of a frame. Just drives me nuts. Um, and this is just an easy way to go through and make sure they're all Super nice. So let's get that other one knocked out and then we'll go weld well those up. I went ahead and I pre drilled some holes. I don't know if you can see these, these are just three quarter inch holes for the jacking system because this side is going to be taller and these legs will go ahead and meet the ground to give us that resistance when we're working on the table. made sure that they are both perfectly square. I went ahead and did an outside dimension, made sure that they were within a sixteenth of an inch they're actually exactly on. I think that's uh, kind of the, the proof of if you do nice measurements, lay everything out, take your time. I think I probably have about 
30 minutes wrapped up in building or tacking both of these frames. So now I'm just going to go ahead and actually weld them out real quick. See if I got enough gas to finish up these ones. I think they're coming out pretty good. This is the most I've ever used this welder. I did like a one inch tack with it about three or four years ago. So I do notice that the duty cycle does not like to keep up. You're welding super fast. Went ahead and just propped it up on its side. It'll actually stand there, but I just threw that clamp on so it didn't fall, fall on me while I was welding them out. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out all of these fillet welds. There's about four of them. I always position my work so as to, you know, make it look the best and make myself work the least hard. When this one's done, I'll take it, flip it all the way over, knock out those two, and I'll be completely done with this side. So that's the first side. I'm gonna go ahead and just pretty much repeat that same process to the other one, and then I'll have both my sides done and we will go ahead and connect them. Okay, so I have both of my sides completely welded. What I need to do now is I need to grind off some of the welds so that the cross members can butt up nicely to them and they're not gonna be hitting an awkward surface or anything like that. One uh, recommendation I would make while if you were to do something like this is to always grind off your ugly welds and kind of have your nice welds to the outside. So I went ahead and I looked over all of them. I did some wire wheeling on a few of them, figured out which ones were the nicest. That way they're gonna be on the outside. And if somebody walks in and sees it, they're gonna only see the nice stuff. So let's go ahead and get to grinding. So now I'm gonna use the tabletop and I'm gonna mount everything kind of to it. And I'm gonna use some ratchet straps because I only got two hands to kind of start holding this whole frame together. It would be a bad idea to maybe weld one of the cross members on and then you know square it up and try to attach all of them. So what my goal is, is try to set the whole thing up using a couple blocks to hold the pieces upright and then ratchet strap the thing together tightly, do some cross measurements, make sure the thing's all nice and square. I'm gonna set it up on its side and that, that way I can do the top and one of the sides, tack it as much as I can, rotate, and then go to town. What I did is I just clamped a block here to the side where the top cross member is going to be, or it's actually the bottom cross member, depending on how you want to look at it. So I just measured up from the bottom, or I guess the top of the table frame, up to here, made sure it was in the correct height. One thing you could also do is use a piece of metal that goes across from your other cross member and clamp it all together. Um, I don't have a lot of extra metal, so I had to kind of go with this block solution. Again, using these same plates just on the shelf, so that way when I go ahead and set my piece up there, I'm able to just set it right in, and then I'll be able to adjust it around where it needs to go. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some blocks, I'm going to weld them onto the bottom of the legs for my casters. I've made these blocks just a hair bit smaller. I'm hoping that I will be able to weld and kind of get it all to fit on there with some light grinding, maybe just to square it up make it look nice. And then I'm going to take my casters, I have to cut down the actual caster bottom just a little bit so it fits on here. I hate that look where they're just wider than the leg. So I'm going to do some work on them, get them looking nice and get them welded on. process of welding it, rolling it, welding it, rolling it, all the way till we get it up standing right and we can start putting that final touches for the cross members. So the frame's all done. 
done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to notch out part of this tube so that we can recess in this part of the mounting system for all of my bench grinders and belt sanders and maybe even a drill press. Okay, so I got them both cut out and fitted in, measured them in there, perfect. And all I'm doing here is I'm using a block to make sure that this one is perfectly level. I'll go through and do that with all of them. And once I get the first few tacks in there, then I'll go through, double check, make sure that they're parallel, and then I'll weld them out. Figured I'd better show at least one of these overhead wells, that way everybody can see. Turn it out nice. It's gonna look super good when it's all painted. Cross members are completely put in, welded up. Everything looks super good. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna run over all the welds with the wire wheel, make sure that there's no spatter or slag or anything stuck on them. That way when I go to paint, it doesn't flake off underneath the paint. It's kind of a nice clean way to make sure everything looks professional and it's done nice. And then at that point, I just gotta slap the tabletop on and I'm done. So I'm ready to paint now. And what I've done is I just took some tape, went ahead and put it on a couple corners. I probably did way more than I needed to. Cause when I put the tabletop on, I'm just gonna reach in from the underside and tack it on there. You don't really need a lot holding it down, but I don't wanna have to fight through paint underneath there to get my welds in. So I'm just gonna put some tape on there, shoot all the paint over top of them, peel the tape off, put my tabletop on, and I'm gonna be ready to weld it. What I did is I just pulled the wheels off, put it up on some stands, or some, some blocks, they're not really stands, and we're gonna go ahead and primer and paint. If I had to make one suggestion to you guys, if you're making or fabricating anything, always primer. The primer really smooths out a lot of things and makes your paint look significantly nicer. So take the time, spend a couple extra bucks, primer. Just have the table clamped down, or I mean the tabletop clamped down, and you can see that it is there is no gaps anywhere. Even if I take it and I go over to one of these corners, you can see we still have perfect, nice flatness out of this plate. So now I'm going to go ahead and weld it down. Here I do roughly one inch tacks all over the place, making sure that if I hit the top with a hammer, it won't rattle. So the table build is complete. Everything turned out just like I was hoping for. The only thing that I might do differently in the future, or if I could go back in time, is I wouldn't paint it yellow. Uh, I've already just been moving it around a little bit, going through and doing like final welds and things like that, and I've already gotten it dirty, I've already scratched it, and I've already scuffed it. And I'm like, ugh. I admit it is a work table, so I'm not gonna be too worried about it, but I probably would go with like a blue or something like that. So, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked what you've seen, please subscribe and hit the like button.